is we're going to get um, we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to trim a pork butt and this is mostly just for for home eat, for home use but I'll show you a little tips and tricks so it's already done it's wrapped up I'm gonna just drain the juices off into my bucket or into my pan you want to keep all your juices Because the pork, once you pull the pork, it'll they'll all soak. It'll all soak back up. Okay, so get in here, Elijah. And look at just you can zoom it in or whatever. Your bone pulls out. Okay, see how easy that pulled out? That means it's done. If the bone does not come out easily, you're gonna have a hard time because you can't go put it really put it back on the smoker at this point. You want to cook it to at least 190 degrees. This one was cooked to about 205. It makes it super, super tender. Okay. So I'm going to just kind of pick up chunks of it here and lay it, lay it out. Get the rest of our juices. Don't want to waste any juices. All right, we're gonna set this is this is the horn. This is where the bone was. We're gonna set this aside for right now. We get some good chunks out of this. So what I'm gonna show you here is where the uh, fat cap is. I'm just gonna kind of peel this back. Okay, and that's really the fat cap there. This is the tubes that was underneath the fat cap. Okay, we're gonna set we're gonna set this aside. That's kind of some fat stuff there. I'm gonna set this aside for right now. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take my knife, I'm gonna take the dole end, I'm not gonna take the sharp end, and I'm gonna turn it over first. I'm gonna scrape using the dull side of a knife. You can, just a dull edge. You don't wanna use a sharp edge. I'm just gonna scrape this layer of fat off. Don't, you wanna use a little pressure, but not too much. You don't wanna destroy your meat underneath it. Underneath that fat cap and between that second layer of fat that was under here, there's a lot, fine layer of meat. And barbecue enthusiasts and competition cooks like myself would call this the bacon. See how I see how I just used my knife there and I just kind of peeled with the dull edge, I just kind of peeled that fat away. Okay. And so now this, all this extra nonsense here, you don't want that. Okay, this is called the bacon. This is what you, now this, my bacon here is, is a little charred on this side, which might not necessarily be a bad thing, but the more you can protect it with the fat cap, the better. So you just kind of pull it off in strands And if it's got some extra fat on it, you can you can individ, you can pull the fat off the individual strands as well. Um, I won a, a people's choice contest at my at my work. There was um, quite a, there was some teams there that were some guys that knew what they were doing, and um, most most of them are just you know backyard cooks you know and I'm mostly that would mostly be considered what I am as well even though I do compete on the professional side um, and this is how I prepared my, my box um, most other red guys they just turned in like sample cups and everything and I very meticulously had my my bacon prepared like this and the judges were completely blown away by it Now, they weren't KCBS judges. I think maybe one of them was, but. Um, and that's what, that's the bacon right there. And so you, then you take your, your Blues Hog Championship blend, which is a blend of three sauces already. The three sauces that I would mix regardless. Just a little dab will do you. Mix this together. And you've got the absolute best part of the pork butt, of the pork shoulder. 
Again, this is that layer of meat between the layers of fat. So when you, if you take that fat cap when you're trimming your pork, if you take that fat cap off when you're trimming, you're taking this layer of meat off as well. Or if you don't take that layer of meat off, it's going to be a way overcooked and you're not going to be able to eat it. It's going to be too crunchy. It's not going to be tender and moist and juicy and when you first place trophies. It's this. It's out of this world. Okay. So down here, where the bone was, this is called the horn. The horn is where we get some really good chunks from, okay? When you're preparing a turn-in box, you wanna get, you just kinda of wanna pull these apart. You're looking for some good pieces of the bark, like that's way too tender, you know, for it to be considered for chunks. Might be able to turn this piece in right here. That's a nice piece with good bark on this side and tender bits in here. I'm gonna go ahead and, and just shred it though, since this is for somebody else. This is just a, this is just for eating. Okay, so now we're just gonna, I do prefer to do this by hand. Um, I have claws, which I don't like to use. I have a pork, I have a pork, uh, pulled pork drilling tool that I use on my, uh, on my drill that will uh, pull this very, very quickly. Um, I like to use my hands though. I like to see where the muscles are. And sometimes that pork, the pulling tool, if you're only doing a couple, I, I like to have more of the personal approach. If I'm doing like 10, like for a catering job, yeah, I'll use that, that tool because I can pull, I can do about five at once pretty easily, any more than that. Uh, it just, it's way too much. Okay. Old pork goodness. Okay. This is also part of the horn. Now, right here, what we have, this is where the tubes are, and then our money muscle is right here, and I'll show you that in just a second. So you can see right here, see this strand right here? This is one of your tubes. See how you can pull this out? These are just different muscle fibers. If you just come in here with your fingers, and it's still really super hot. I got cloth gloves underneath these, these gloves here, and it's still hot. You can just come in here and you can just feel where the different muscle groups are and they're tender enough you can just pull them apart now you don't have to do this I'm just showing you the different the different ways that you can get your uh, like the consistency that you want like from your slice if you want slice you want to make slices and stuff um, like the tubes here they pull apart, it's like string cheese almost. See that? And a lot of people will use that as well for their turn-in boxes for pulled pork, for competitions. But your tube's gotta be really, really t tender and have a lot of flavor. Typically, they may have less flavor because they're deep inside. I mean, they'll, they'll taste good, don't get me wrong. But you get most of your flavor from the surface to the kind of the, to the especially where the money muscle is, because that's the part where the, the rub is. The rub will penetrate, but it's not going to penetrate too deep. Um, that's why you, a lot of times you want to inject. The more you inject, the more flavor you're injecting into the meat. And some people don't like to inject. They have a, they're, they, they just don't believe in it because they're, because pork does have a lot of fat in it. So it's going to provide a lot of its own juices. Um, and if that's what you want to do, that's perfectly fine. You do you. If you don't like to inject your pork, then don't inject it. Um, everybody has their own style and there's no wrong way or right way. Um, there are some things that I would say, you know, do, do or don't do like, you know, don't pull your pork off the smoker at 165 degrees, you know, and think it's going to be 
Yeah, yeah, you can eat it at that temperature, don't get me wrong, but you ain't gonna be able to pull it. It's not gonna be tender enough. So here I'm just taking this and just kinda working it through, and this is so hot. And we're gonna mix all this up in our juices here. Let's get a little more here. Some of these interior pieces can get a little, can tend to get a little dried out. That's why you want to make sure you save all those juices, because those dried pieces are the pieces that are a little more dry than the pieces that were around the big, the fat groups, the fat veins. Um, they will soak up this juice that I've got here and there in the bottom of the pan, and they'll retain it too. Hot. It's super, super hot. I mean, it's been off the smoker for a while. It's still just blazing hot, which is good. Okay. All right, now we're going to look at this money muscle. Our money muscle is right here. We're going to be able to get some good slices out of that. I'm going to just pull the rest of this. Just chunk it up. Now, normally for home cooks, you don't care about the money muscle. You just want to, you're just going to, you're going to shred it like everything else. But I do want to show you what you can do with the money muscle. Now the money muscle is at the opposite end of where the bone was. Um, and if you cook it too, if you, if you overcook it where it's too tender, the money muscle will fall apart. So we're gonna see how tender my money muscle is. Don't laugh at that. And this is not the consistency that I would use for a competition. It's most mainly because I didn't trim it. I didn't do a competition trim on this ahead of time, which I trim back the muscle groups for a competition. So I isolate, everything's gotta still be intact, but I isolate the money muscle um, and I cut the tubes way back. And you have to have at least four and a half pounds on a pork butt. I'll trim it down to about usually about six. So this is actually a really good money muscle. Oh, I don't need that. Okay. So the money muscle, you slice them into these medallions here. So it's still a little bit of fat there that's holding that together. It's, that's really, really tender. It's rendered out pretty well. So it's really easy to, it's not gonna be chewy fat. It's gonna melt in your mouth. This piece. Mm. That is good stuff. Okay. All right, so we're going to get all this juice worked in here. cameraman want a piece of pork <laughs> okay now we're going to take our championship blend blues hog championship blend we're going to go this like this like this okay doesn't need a ton of sauce but the blues hog championship blend is an absolute perfect blend competition blend it's what lots of people use People tell me all the time when they when they have my pork, they say uh, they say your pork is amazing and like I'll like well I'll, I'll have it out and I'll have some sauce there with it you know some sauce that I have at home never Casey masterpiece or something like that but you know some plowboy sauce or even some blues hog and I'll and I'll set it out and they'll say oh your pork is so awesome it doesn't need sauce and I don't tell them it does have a little sauce on it already 
But the trick is, is like like anything, mo everything in moderation. Um, I used to not like to sauce anything, and then I realized sauce actually adds another unique flavor. And but you don't want it drowning in sauce. So this really worked in good here. Okay. And that, and so this is for a friend of mine. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the, the little slices here. Little money muscle slices. They'll open that up and be like a little, little Christmas treat. Even though it's not Christmas, it's Easter. So. Mm. That's good stuff. Yeah. Might chew on that later. All right. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you learned something. If you have a question, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.